Well, welcome to a new ITCC webinar presented by Matias Sabra, one of our ATCC members. The webinar title is Marketing Mixed Models. I'm Lucas Lombardi, your host and moderator for this session. Thank you for joining us today. Before we start, let me make uh, let me take a moment to introduce ourselves and give you a brief overview of who we are and what we do. The Argentina and Texas Chamber of Commerce ATCC is an independent nonprofit voluntary membership association founded in 2016 to promote investment, trade, education, and networking opportunities between Texas and Argentina. The Chamber is dedicated to build strong economic bond between Argentina and Texas. In this webinar, we will explore the opportunity to make smarter business choices tailored to maximize your company growth and success. Our speaker today uh, is Matias Sabra, founder of Statoptima. Matias has more than 12 years of experience in the analytical marketing industry and has led teams for multiple companies such, such as telecommunication, oil and gas, and banking. Finally, we'd like to thank our corporate members for their, continu sorry, for their continuous support of the Chamber. They are Pan American Energy, Gold Member, Duralite, Globant, and PCR, Silver Members, as well as AESA, Marvalo Farrell, Mayor Brown, ProShale, Q Advance, and Capex, Bronze Member. Let us clarify that our webinars are recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. And finally, a brief overview of our webinar series. Matias will present his talk without interruptions. We kindly, we kindly request you pop your questions in the Q&A chat and we will read them to Matias once he finishes. So Matias, let's begin. Uh, the webinar is yours. Thank you, Lucky, and thanks to the ATCC and to everyone for your interest in this webinar called, um, as was mentioned, Marketing Mixed Models, uh, which is, as we will see today, a very powerful uh, technique for measuring business performance. So adding a very brief introduction to the presentation already done. Uh, sorry, let me, let me check. Oh, okay, now, um, my name is Matias Sabra, as I already said, I'm founder of Statoptima, which is an agency where we um, offer statistics and business solutions uh, based on data analytics. I'm an economist uh, with a bent in econometrics and data science, and today I'm going to speak based on my experience in the analytical and marketing industry. So what are going to be the main benefits and key takeaways of this webinar? First of all, to give the audience a clear idea of what a marketing mix model is and how it works. Secondly, to also give an accurate description of how actionable it is. And finally, I would love if you leave the meeting feeling ready to use a marketing mix model to track your business performance. How are we going to do it? We are going to review first some theory behind this technique. Um, then we are going to talk about um, how to use that th theory uh, on a real business case. And finally, uh, we are going to talk very briefly uh, about what um, standard business, uh, a standard um, measurement plan looks like. But before getting into the topic that um, Bring us, brings us together today. I just uh, want to make a point on that, although this is a topic that seems to be quite technical, um, we are going to address it in a very understandable way. So I just want to make clear that, um, of course, besides those that are already interesting because uh, their occupations, I just want uh, to make clear that uh, you understand that this was a presentation. I think it to be for everyone interested. Uh, 
So um, if during my explanation there is something that you don't understand, uh, probably it's because I'm not explaining it in the right way. So please formulate uh, a question. And by the end of this uh, presentation, there is going to be uh, uh, some space, as Lucas mentioned, for a QA. and So uh, being that said, I think that we can start um, with some theory and asking ourselves, what is it and what is it for? So marketing mix model, when we refer to a model, we are talking about a mathematical equation that tries in, to explain in a simplified way a market dynamic where the main goal is to understand the different factors that are contributing to our business that otherwise would be quite difficult to get a read over those factors without the model or without any other statistical technique, right? And let me give you an example by taking a look at the graph below. What we have here is the weekly sales evolution of a brand, any brand. And if we add the media sales investment across all the time period, what we usually see is that there exists some level of correlation between the activity of the brand and their sales. And if we also think or imagine that uh, within their investment that a, that a, that a brand uh, execute, there exist different, uh, me, the different media systems, like it could be out of home, TV, Facebook, Google, for seeing some from the offline and some from the digital world, we can formulate some questions like, for example, which one of them is the more effective or what is the incrementality per dollar invest, the, the incrementality per dollar invested, that is how much sales and getting back per dollar I invest in, in communication, right? Also, we can see independently of the activity of the brand that there are variations in sales in, uh, that may depend on other factors not directly controllable by a brand, like it could be um, variables related to the weather or the activity of the competition, um, or simply isolated events that may affect in a positive or negative way to our sales, right? And finally, also, we can also see um, that during periods of absence of our activity, says don't fall below a certain level. So what is that baseline level that we usually call uh, or we usually associate uh, uh, that baseline level to the top of mind of our consumers? Um, that is that certain levels of sales that, that we construct in the long run because of our short run decisions related to marketing, right? So these sort of questions are sort of questions that we can uh, answer with a technique like this. So, so far, what we have here, and always thinking in what influenced the most in our consumers at the moment of purchasing, is a model that uses variables that are under our control as a brand, like it could be, for example, our own price, our own investments in communication, and many others. It also uses context variables and everything combined to explain an indicator of performance of our business. Usually it is sales, but it could be any other of the ones that I'm showing or, or any other that you can imagine. And here it comes the main two challenges that I usually call them the two challenges that involves the beauty of building a model. The first challenge is related to the fact that since a model is a um, simplification of a reality, we must take into account the most relevant variables of that reality to be the most closest to the truth. And that is the first challenge of, of building a model. The second challenge, it is related to the fact that since the variables within a model are of a diverse nature, the way we measure them and the answers we want to get from them are as well of a diverse nature. And let me give you an example. It is not the same to measure how changes in price affect sales than to measure how changes in advertising affect sales, right? And here uh, comes another question. And of course, I'm going to look through here. Um, 
And the question is, how do we measure advertising? So when we model, advertising is subject to two main effects or economical behaviors, who can call them. The first effect is related to the fact that communication lasts beyond the period in which we execute an action. And that is reflected in the graph below where the blue bar represents the period or the week in which we execute an action. And the green line represents how our consumers remember that action as time goes by, right? Like the sun says. The second effect is related to the fact that for every media system, and when I said media system, I, I refer to uh, TV, Facebook, Google, a media system, right? For every media system, there exists a diminishing return on investment. So if you continue buying increasing levels of execution, there is a moment at which you will reach a saturation point, right? So by combining these two effects is how we correctly isolate the contribution of communication in our models. So what we finally get is a model that correctly represents the dynamics of a market. And that is what we are looking at in the graph at the left, where the blue line called actual represents the real variations of sales across um, the period analysis. And the red line represents what a model could do with the most represented, representative variables that we selected. And that is called predicted. And here I want to do a clarification with the word predictive. Uh, when we say predictive, it is not a prediction like going to a visionary. It's a prediction like um, uh, sending our data to the doctor and the doctor with the most recent past data will tell us uh, how are we doing and what to change to do it better, right? So how do we know if the doctor uh, based on our most recent past data is giving us a good diagnosis or returning to uh, our model uh, argument. How do we know that we are getting a good model? So building a model involves um, an iterative process that uh, involves a, a balance between what we usually call statistical rigor and practical intuition or business sense. Where in on the one hand, what we do is um, to um, uh, uh, to prove our models against uh, statistics to be between uh, a cert certain uh, parameter to be between certain parameters. One of them is the so-called norm R square, which gives us a sense of how well our model is fitting against the real variation of sales across all the time periods, right? Uh, but of course, we also look for uh, other statistics in order to get a rigorous uh, and healthy uh, model, and an unhealthy model, statistically rigorous and healthy model, right? And on the other hand, we got the business sense that where what we do is to formulate hypotheses based on our business expectations. And if throughout the process, those expectations are not met, then um, we ask ourselves what could be wrong. If it, it is the, the, the model specification, it is uh, that there was uh, an omitted variable, it is something wrong with the data, or maybe there is a, a new learning that we have to assimilate and and, and ask ourselves uh, uh, what do we have to modify to get an optimal model. Once we get an optimal model, we can decompose it and analyze results. So there are two ways to analyze results that, of course, um, uh, uh, they are um, uh, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, Live, they live together, right? And um, so the static 
uh, where we can determine from here the main contributors to the business. And from here, uh, we can do every kind of um, analysis and comparisons related to cost analysis and return on investments. And the dynamic where whether the business is decreasing or increasing, we can determine from here um, the main uh, drivers of change from the business from a period to another. And in the static is for a certain period, right? A second set of results are the optimizations. If, if we take a look to the graph below, what we have here is for every media system, there is a curve. And in the horizontal axis, what we have is different level levels of budgets. So for each, oh sorry. So for each budget level, depending on the um, on the media system that we, we are analyzing, will correspond an incremental revenue. So what is interesting here is first to get to know the shape of the curve of each of your media system. And secondly, how do they work together? And that is the main goal of this, how all of my media systems work together, given, of course, a, a media budget, a, a total media budget, right? Because then you can simulate different scenarios for different media budgets, and why not, given also um, different constraints, different, different uh, given different contracts that you may have. Um, so, to then obtain a, a media mix recommendation that will uh, give you an optimal incremental revenue. So up to here, this is all the theory that we have to move on to our next stop. Hope this is not too much uh, about theory. Um, that is an example of how we can use it on a business case. And let me give you some background about this business case. Uh, this is a uh, this was a client from the telecommunication sector. And uh, this happened in Argentina a few years ago, as you can see, we took off this project in 2015. And what one could breathe in the air when talking with the client was like they were having a great party, but suddenly something went wrong. Their leads, which is what we are looking at here, um, decreased measured, of course, from 2013 to uh, the whole 2015 by negative 22%. Also, uh, you know, in Argentina, we are very famous because of Lionel Messi first, but secondly, because of high inflation rates. Um, by 2015, the annual inflation rate was about 30% in average. And that was a problem for keeping efficiency at the moment of uh, purchasing uh, media executions. And finally, uh, the, the, the context of the market was uh, really complex. You can imagine that Netflix came to the market in 2011, and there were another two main competitors in terms of market share. So the objective was to optimize the media impact on leads generation. And this was very important to us because this was a statement um, given by the client and gave us uh, an important question to answer by, the, by, the, by this technique. Their uh, leads were decreasing. What do we have to do to, uh, to return to growth on leads generation? So we designed the models, um, of course, taking into account all the theory that I have mentioned above. Actually, what you are looking at here is um, the whole picture of several deliveries that were done mostly uh, once every six months. 
And for those who are curious, those two spikes at the end of 2017 are related to two football matches, Real Madrid versus Barcelona, that you can imagine that Messi was playing. Um, we identify the main contributors to the business and we use every insight from the models and we uh, uh, design the simulation tools to um, uh, in order to to work together with internal teams uh, every time it it was necessary to take decisions related to marketing uh, strategy and also uh, uh, to take decisions related uh, to marketing tactics so as i was saying the work was uh, really focused on determining the main contributors to the business at the lowest cost. And by 2017, we have the absolute determination that the decreasing trend was uh, reversed. Mid investment was only 11% up, while the uh, inflation rate rates were around, the annual inflation rates were around 30% each year in average. And the brand was not only um, able to stop the decreasing trend, but was also able to start growing in a really complex, as I mentioned, complex uh, market environment where competitors were, were playing really hard, right? So moving on to our next stop, how can we implement a standard process or a standard measurement plan like this? So generally speaking, um, when we talk about the measurement plan, there are at least four main stages. Once we design, once we define the main question to be answered, the first stage is related to um, um, data collection process, where we usually have at least three data sources related to the uh, data collection, usually a uh, business data source, third-party data source, and context data source. In a second stage, we design a singular database that is functional to every kind of data analysis, analysis and, and descriptives that will give us um, a, a good context that will um, uh, be functional also to get uh, uh, the necessary knowledge to formulate our hypothesis to in a following stage design the model to get results and to design the simulation tools to finally deliver results in the more convenient um, uh, format for the client. Here I'm pasting some of them, but of course there are multiple ways to deliver results depending on the client. Usually, depending on the scope of the, the uh, project and depending, of course, on uh, how fluent is the communication in the first stage, a, measure, a standard measurement plan, it lasts from five to six weeks, of course, depending on um, mostly on, on, on the scope and on, on the first and second stages, right? But that is the benchmark. From a, a more profound and philosophical uh, point of view, when we talk about the measurement plan, we always say that uh, it is like a living tool that to keep it alive, we have to update our databases every time we want to um, take uh, business decisions in order to re-update our models and our results in order again to um, uh, recalibrate our optimizations. And recalling our uh, analogy uh, from the doctor, this is like a virtue cycle, like going to the doctor once every six uh, months or once a year um, to 
check how are we doing and what to change to do it better, right? And this is the philosophy uh, of a measurement plan and this is how uh, we see it. So to conclude, and then we can spend some time for a q and I want to bring back our benefits and key takeaways, uh, the benefits and key take takeaways that I promise you uh, that we uh, will have for, for uh, this uh, webinar. So regarding uh, the theory behind a marketing mix model, always remember that the better the data, the better the results. This is like cooking a meal and the ingredients in a way are going to be determinant of the results. But maybe you are thinking that your business or the state of the data of, of your business uh, is not at that stage to uh, be exposed um, to a measurement plan like this. So let me tell you if you're one of those that if there is a problem or a, con or a, a business concern um, that you need to resolve, then we can manage the data. But it is important here that um, the direction in which things happen is like this. Uh, there should be a big problem to resolve, whether the uh, or regardless um, how the 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 state of the data is, uh, and not the other way around. Uh, that is how I do think um, we can unlock growth for business, right? Um, and finally, I'm not sure if uh, you're leaving the meeting feeling ready to use a marketing mix model to track your business because I cannot see you. Um, but at least I hope that um, you're feeling more closer to the uh, the methodology and more closer at least uh, to what a, a measurement plan looks like. Uh, and what I can remind you is that this is a living tool. And if you want to enhance your business decision, um, well, um, um, it is important to keep it alive. And I invite you to think in which uh, indicator of your business uh, would you like to start measuring or even better, what uh, business question um, would you like to get to answer? Thank you very much again. Thank you to the ATCC. Thank you all for your time to listen. And now, yes, I'm open uh, to questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, there are a couple of questions here. The first one, um, do you have a basic tip for those who didn't face a model to measure their business performance? Uh, well, yes. For those who never did a, a, a model, let's say, uh, wants to start to uh, measure their business, uh, it is important to start uh, to, to measure the descriptives, as I said, right? Uh, to understand what their cost per support is. You know, you have uh, your investments, you have um, uh, your metrics, let's say you have your impressions, you, you have your uh, your rating points if you you are investing uh, communication in TV you know, or in, in the digital world. Uh, and also to of course you will understand if if you if your your sales are increasing, decreasing or your visits to your web depending on, on the nature of your business. So um, it is important to get to understand what we usually call the descriptives of your business. Um, so that is a good starting and will give a, will give you a good sense of your business. Of course, uh, for every entrepreneur, uh, probably that is a, a basic answer, but uh, maybe you have a department of marketing and that is a, a, a um, a good direction uh, to give. Great, thanks. Uh, here we have a, a more question. Let's say, uh, Matias, will you talk about data sources to fit the model and filtering quality of data? Data. 
Sorry, can you ask me that again? Uh, uh, can you talk about data sources and how to feed the model with those? That's what I understand from the question. And how do you how do you filter the quality of the data? Well, yeah. Um, of course, the um, when when we yeah, there is a lot of uh, data management that we have to do once we start a measurement plan, right? Um, from the digital world, um, there is usually uh, and here depend. The, <laughs> We have to spend a, a whole uh, webinar to to talk about data management, uh, but uh, usually uh, the data should be in a certain format. Uh, uh, the the most uh, the most desired format is uh, to have it in a weekly uh, basis. Uh, when when the data came from the from the digital world, uh, we like to have it uh, to have investments and impressions because impressions are the probability of having of having uh, been uh, uh, saw by your consumers. And uh, when we are talking about the traditional world, you know, TV, out of home radio, print, etc. Um, well, from TV, uh, we have a uh, GRPs and from out of home, print, uh, and the rest of the media systems, we usually have other metrics uh, that it, they can be inserts, even uh, 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 the, the own investments, but there is a lot of uh, data management that we can uh, or ponderate to have a, a good correlation and good correlation with the, the behavior of our consumers. And, and, uh, and also we have to take care about the granularity of the data, right? The granularity should be weekly in a weekly level and the sales should be in a weekly level. Why? Because uh, we, we, what we want is to see uh, the, the, uh, the behavior of the consumers um, in, in, a, in, a, in a more correctly form, right? Okay, uh, I guess you have a, some kind of, some kind of program where you see all the information um not not always so that depends on the communication with the client or how they uh, process their information sometimes they don't don't have a, a good organization within their uh, enterprises so uh, there is where we have a lot of work to do and and uh, so what we look at is how their sales move and how we can manage their data their data to um, their investment data to cor to correctly uh, to have a to match a sense between their sales and their investments okay okay thanks in the correct granularity Got okay. So uh, here is another question from Sebastian. Does this marketing mix model apply to all types of companies? Uh, what kind of brands fit better? Um, good question. Um, this this kind of technique applies the better for those type of companies that are investing in communication and that face uh, the uh, face consumers in the market right you want to understand uh, the contribution 
of your 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 marketing to the business. So if you are investing in marketing, um, this is a technique in different type of marketing. Think it's a, as a whole. You want this this is a technique that applies to you. Okay. Um. I think um, that's. Let me check. That's it with the questions. Well, uh, Matias, thank you very much for your time. Here I have some thanks from Josefina saying congratulations on the presentations. Uh, well, that's it. So uh, remember that the webinar is going to be on our YouTube channel where you can see it later. Uh, and well, again, thank you, Matias, for your time, your presentation. Uh, that's it. Do you want to, to, to say something else? Thank you very much again. And please, if there is any uh, additional uh, question, you can write me an email. Um, thanks. Thanks a lot again. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.